When we are hiring a new junior developer for our startup business, they always come to me and ask, which operating system should we use? And I always say the same thing. If you don't have a strong preference for a single operating system, just use Linux. Now, why is that? It's mostly to do with what other fellow developers use, and they primarily use Linux or Unix-based operating systems. Now, why is that? You know why it is. It is because Linux is the operating system of servers. If you have a thousand servers to maintain, well, you can't afford Windows. And macOS has a horrific server-side software. So you are left with Linux, which means you will eventually have to get familiar with it. While you have to do so, just use it as your desktop operating system too. I've been doing that and I've been extremely satisfied with Manjaro Linux. And today I'll do a fresh start and recreate my developer setup. So let's do it. I must note that as a senior software engineer, my needs in software is much broader than the starters. I need a software development suit and a lot of design, diagramming, and other office productivity tools. This is the natural progression of a senior engineer. You get more involved in design, architecture, and business side of things as time goes on. So today we will tap into a lot of tools to create the ultimate Linux-based setup. Finally, we will make some contributions to the Quantic Dev GitHub repo using the brand new setup. Now comes the million dollar question. Which Linux distro shall we use? As always, I highly recommend Manjaro Linux for all development and productivity use cases. It is basically Arch Linux with a nice UI for most parts of the system, including most configurations. It has XFCE, GNOME, i3, and many other variants. Start with the default XFCE, and later you can switch to something more advanced like i3, or just keep everything as is. I will skip the ISO download and installation steps as they are very well documented in Majora's website. Then we need to configure our package manager. I will use Pamac in this video, which is Majora's default package manager with a user-friendly UI. If you prefer the command line, you can use the pacman command from the terminal. In the settings, we need to enable AUR, Arch User Repository, which will allow us to install third-party and vendor-supplied packages, like Google Chrome. They are user-submitted packages, so there's always a chance of malware. Hence, don't install what you don't trust. Manjura has a nice UI for most of the system settings, so go to the Settings app and change everything to your liking, including mouse speed, keyboard repeat speed, screen saver, etc. Next is to install some packages. A ton of useful stuff that is common to most people like git, zip, etc. is all pre-installed. I will also stick with the default XFC terminal, which I think is sufficient. I will also stick to the default installed LibreOffice for my business stuff. I will use LibreOffice Draw for all my diagrams and Writer for my software design documents. Next, we will install the default development and productivity tool suite. If you get a notification about pending updates, don't forget to apply them before this step or you will get the older version of the tools. I will start with Node.js, Go, and Python as my primary programming language runtimes. Then VirtualBox, in case I need to use Windows or macOS for testing my apps, as I don't like pulling my laptops for each small test. GIMP for photo editing, and Inkscape for creating vector graphics, like app icons. DaVinci Resolve for video editing. I'm still learning and trying to switch from Premiere. Chrome for automated web tests, using Puppeteer. Firefox is there by default. And finally, Dropbox is our backup solution. It has a native Linux client, which is nice. You might have to scroll down a bit to find the exact packages as the vendor supplied AUR packages turn out at the bottom, or just filter the packages by type from the top. Now comes the crucial part. I like to use Visual Studio Code for all the plain text editing tasks and avoid them wherever possible. Moreover, I like to use IntelliJ for all my projects. I love IntelliJ IDEA as it has plugins for pretty much all programming languages and environments. It is a community edition with fewer capabilities, which you can use without a license. Also, the full version is free for students and open source developers. Now the development setup is ready, let's do our first productive task on this machine. We will pull the Quantic Devs GitHub repo and add a link to this video on the homepage. We could just use the command git pull, but I want to try IntelliJ's GitHub integration for the first time. All we must do is to go to Quantic Dev GitHub repo and click the code button and copy the repo URL and paste it into IntelliJ's get from VCS dialog. IntelliJ automatically pulls the Quantic Dev repo and handles everything for us. Then we can go to README, which represents the website's index, and add a link to this video with an upcoming tag. 
Now we will commit and push the changes. IntelliJ will ask to authenticate with GitHub. After doing that, the changes are pushed to GitHub successfully. After waiting for a short while, the changes appear on the website. Now let's try something else. We will go to the algorithm section of the repo and run some of the algos. Thanks to IntelliJ's default integration with Node.js, which we installed earlier, we can right-click on any JavaScript file and click Run. It runs the test in the algorithm file too, and everything works. Now let's try the same thing on a Python file. We will first try the IntelliJ's terminal. I use it all the time when I'm working inside the IntelliJ window, and it seems to be working fine too. For all my simple editing tasks, I will stick to terminal plus Visual Studio Code combo. Visual Studio Code is fast becoming an integrated development environment itself. So one day, I will replace IntelliJ with it. And just like that, our new Linux development setup is ready to go. Now I will edit this video and upload it using my YouTube automation, which I created in a previous video. I like making this type of setup videos, and I will keep you guys updated. If you like them also, give the video a thumbs up, so I will know. Well, that's about it. Less than five minutes, and we have our developer setup going. Imagine doing the same thing with Windows or macOS. Oh boy, all of this time would have been spent trying to install a package manager. Now I'll go back to my lab and enjoy my new setup, and I'll leave you with the lovely scenery from Gothenburg, Sweden.